So the final mobile constraint is the small screen. This might seem like the most obvious mobile constraint, and it basically means that we can't fit as much on a really small smartphone screen. But there's two really awesome techniques that we can use that will help us optimize for our small UI. Yeah, they're called combination and reflow. And we're going to talk to an Android designer developer called Nick Butcher, he's on the Android team, about how to make this work in your applications. So Android is not a one-size-fits-all OS. It comes in many different sizes and shapes, from small phones to large tablets, TVs, and beyond. The great news is that Android has been built from the ground up to embrace this variety and give you tools uh, in order to deal with it. So from the very beginnings, Android has allowed you to scale your user interface up and down between different devices. The problem is that scaling approaches will only get you so far. Uh, so I'm going to take you through um, some of the common pitfalls we see with this um, relying on scaling approaches, and then going to go through some um, alternative ways of dealing with this. So the first problem we see commonly is one of having um, excessive line lengths. So in this app application, the text and images are running the full width of the device's screen. On a smaller phone size device, this might be fine. But as you get beyond um, a certain size, this becomes uncomfortable. When you, especially when you're looking at line lengths of text, you want to be aiming for between 45 and 75 characters of text in order to maintain a comfortable reading experience so the user can easily scan across it. Um, in this application, we can see that this is clearly exceeding that. The next problem we commonly see is one of unbalanced content. So in this example, we can see there's a lot of content clustered up in the top left of the screen, and then leaving huge amounts of white space across the rest of the screen. This leads to a very kind of unbalanced feeling, which makes your application feel completely unoptimized for this device. And the last problem we commonly see uh, is more of a, a missed opportunity, almost, of not making the best use of the real estate available to you. So in this example, we might have an application which shows many photos. Uh, and as we can see, there are these tiny little thumbnails all grouped over to one side. It really is a shame not to make the use of these beautiful big screens and when all this extra real estate when it is available to you. Um, so you want to be avoiding this. So those are some of the common pitfalls we see in um, relying on scaling approaches. And the answer to dealing with these problems really is to adopt a responsive mobile design to respond to the device's um, characteristics. So here are three techniques you can use in order to do this. So the first technique is simply one of combination. This is if you have um, extra room, combining things from different screens onto a single screen in order to make up to fill up the space. So in this example, we've got a typical master detail view, uh, which on a phone would be on two separate screens. So clicking through from a list item, for example, might show subsequent details. On a larger device with sufficient width, um, we might show both of these things at once. And this will avoid the problem of having those excessive line lengths and make better use of the screen real estate. The second technique is one that we call macro reflow. So this is taking the major building blocks of your application and reflowing them or rearranging them on the screen in order to make better use of the space. So in this example, we simply move something like a, a large header image and a body text, instead of being um, vertically stacked above each other, to be horizontally stacked next to each other. So this will give the image more space to, kind of, um, to show off on the, the, the larger amount of screen real estate, as well as avoiding those excessive line lengths um, when it's in a landscape device. So this is not only useful for different size devices, you can also use this kind of trick when uh, changing on the same device between different orientations. And the last um, technique I want to go through is something we call micro reflow. Um, so this technique really focuses on the individual blocks within your design, and it delegates responsibility to those individual blocks to optimize themselves given a certain amount of space. So a couple of examples of doing that. Uh, on, the, on the left here, we have a, a list type um, application, which given sufficient space might lead to those excessive line lengths or very unbalanced views. So instead of that, each individual list item knows that given a certain amount of space, how to draw itself. So once it gets um, over a certain size, a certain amount of width available to the device, um, it will change its representation. Instead of being a list item, it might change to, say, a grid, grid representation. So this will allow you to have a, a, you know, fill the space better. The second example is if you, you can't, kind of, if there's simply no way to introduce more content, uh, you can introduce a margin point instead. 
So in this form type application on the right, uh, when we go for beyond the phone past a certain size, when there just isn't any more content we can show on screen, uh, we simply uh, introduce a margin point so that it doesn't end up being excessively long or excessively unbalanced. So Nick just talked to us about some really awesome UI techniques for small screens. But the small screen affects a lot more than just the UI. It actually really affects the UX of your app. Yeah, uh, simply taking a web or desktop app and shrinking it down so it fits into a sm uh, small screen is probably not the way to go. Yeah, you really need to think mobile first and optimize your flow for the smartphone. So how do we do this? Wireframing. Wire